Hi, welcome everyone. Thanks again so much for stopping by. <clears throat> Got a bit of a throat problem, I think. Well, time of the weather, eh? It's not cold enough here in Canada. It's actually excruciatingly cold. It's getting even colder. And sometimes refraction is caused by the cold or the coming of a big snowfall. And we talk about these lights, sun dogs. This was 26 kilometers away from my home. Uh, a person sent it in, and thank you very much. And we're going to talk about these uh, sun dogs, or also known as mock sun, a phantom sun. And the scientific name is uh, parhelia. So, an atmospheric phenomenon that consists of a pair of bright spots on either horizontal side of the sun. Now, why do they say just on e either horizontal side of the sun? We're seeing refraction on Eddie Moore's page. We saw it horizontally and vertically. Now, why is that happening? They say it often occurs with a luminous ring known as a 22-degree halo. And, well, Eddie lives in North Dakota. Eddie Moore. Check out his channel. He got a nice... Um, quadruple set of sun dogs over the sun was pretty incredible now this doesn't always happen um, you know it happens when the sun is close to the horizon this is known that it happens a 22 degree halo of light very conspicuous same altitude above the horizon as the sun they can be seen anywhere in the world during any season but are not always obvious or bright sun dogs are best seen and most conspicuous when the sun is near the horizon now, if you want to look up Sundog on Wikipedia, there's a very bright Sundogs uh, that they show that's in Fargo, North Dakota. Dakota. Uh, they show the 22 degree uh, um, halo, and you can't help but wonder that maybe North Dakota is more subject of uh, getting these halos. What are we looking at here? Well, all the time and very often over the sun, there are some spherical objects or then hang on they're maybe not spherical they're maybe far away asteroids uh, unknown objects crafts planes dust what do you want i don't know it's in the sky and i thought it was pretty interesting seeing these three here and there's three other ones that have a triangular form just a bit underneath and this was right directly stuck on the top um halo of the the sun dog that we could see at the top part of the sun in this anonymous photo. It's very hard to predict where these stars are. And at times, even though I found this, what seemed to be inside of the constellation of Draco or nearby, could be much further out. The Draco Dwarf Galaxy, a very dim galaxy, not a galaxy that could be seen very easily. Draco is just below Hercules, for those who don't know, the constellation of Hercules, just below it. And if you look in the sky, well, you could see the snake shape of the constellation because it literally goes up, down, and over and through the, the sky. Many things that um, people don't know exactly about the constellation of Draco. Uh, the constellation of Draco has a circumpolar star in it. The, the constellation, the center of it, a circumpolar star, as viewed from a given latitude on Earth, it never sets below the horizon due to its apparent proximity to one of the celestial poles. So that's pretty cool. The circumpolar stars are therefore visible from said location toward the nearest pole for the entire night on every night of the year so yeah a lot of people get pictures of draco i guess I'm right i've never seen any but you know it's what's in the sky my goal was to be able to see the surface of these unknown celestial objects it's pretty incredible because it gives you a very good idea of you know what it looks like down there on the surfaces you know whether they are stars or planets, or um, runaway stars, dwarf stars. This is the moon. I had shown this um, a bit differently, but now the outer edge, when you're looking at the moon 
right way off of it, there is a high area on both the west side and also the north side, probably the east also, a part that we can't see because of the light. And at times, depending on either when it's the full moon or not, we can see this beautiful part of the moon, you know? The moon is so fascinating, guys. How can you not be mesmerized by what's on the surface of the moon? But again, when everyone's looking at the moon, we're seeing a gray surface. I know as hard as it is to believe that when you zoom up on that gray surface, it really is not gray. There's a lot of color down there, leaving you to believe and to assume or wonder if there is more atmosphere than what was told to us. You know, they talk about one-sixth of atmosphere on the moon. Come on. And, you know, the moon in consideration to where it is to the sun and to us, why would it be so different? This is serious. No, I mean the star, serious. Um, yeah, well, uh, just a little note, Doug Harvey, thanks, bro, for uh, commenting. And, uh, Doug, listen, you know those smudges that you see in my photos? I am so darn happy that you mentioned them. Um, they're not smudges. They look like lines of smoke, don't they? NASA's photos do look like they have lines on them, right? Like someone's uh, blotching things out, making things blurry, right? I don't believe they have ever. Well, actually, I don't believe that the ones that they're showing publicly that look blotched are blotched. Those are natural surface anomalies that I don't know what they are. It's a phenomenon. But I, I tend to think it's more of an optical phenomenon while we're looking at Sirius here we're talking about the moon Sirius is so re relaxing so yeah Doug thanks for asking and I will go back and comment on your comment but somebody gave me a heads up about the comment so I'm, I'm mentioning it back to you on the video the surface of the moon uh, those smudges are lines that look like of dirt or some kind of um, uh, I don't know what it is, but I talk about it on hundreds of videos, and I never know myself what, uh, what they are. But like I say, they're not smudges, bro. Now, you get people all the time that tell me that you can't see Sirius, and what we're seeing is an optical illusion, and our eyes are giving us back this glare. No. Guys, Sirius is a binary star system. It's not a star. It's a binary star system spiraling around several objects that are giving off light interacting with each other and in the atmosphere at the same time the space and interference and this is what we're getting this beautiful view of it i've seen just in the footage right here that you're looking in, in the video i can clearly see the objects appear several times as it's spiraling around you're looking at it in very very slow uh, motion so serious it's, it's a star system it's the brightest star in the Earth's night sky with a visual apparent magnitude of minus 1.46. It's almost twice as bright as uh, Canopus, the next brighter, uh, brightest star. The system has the Bayer designation Alpha Canis Majoris inside of it. What naked eye perceives as a single star is actually a binary star system. Do you guys know what a binary star system is? Binary star system consisting of two stars orbiting around their common berry center. This is what I want you guys to understand. What is the berry center or berry center um, from the ancient Greek? This is what they call is the center of mass of two or more bodies that are orbiting each other, which is the point around which they both orbit. And that's the berry center. Wonderful contributions that came in from these wonderful people, uh, Bill Copeland and again, Rita the Jagger, recently donations. These are all recent donations. We just opened this whole channel a year and a half ago, and we're already um, advancing and getting a lot of people. 8,500 subscribers. I love you guys. I can't thank you so much enough. I can't thank you enough. Steve Olson. WSO, sorry, YouTube channel. Check him out, guys. See what he's getting up in the sky.